one of the biggest things that we see is people will set up, they'll connect their SQL servers to these big SANs, big S&P servers, and they keep adding servers and servers and servers to these SANs. And what's wrong, you know, there's something wrong with this, okay? And the answer to that is that we've gotten an out-of-balance system, okay? The SAN was originally set up and configured to be able to handle two gigs per second of data access. However, when the data warehouse gets put on there, we need 12 gigs per second to actually be able to access the data to support our queries. The queries are becoming slower and slower, and end users are starting to complain about it. So, you know, the result of this is that a company has made significant investments in these SANs. They've made significant investments in these large S&P SQL servers, and they're not delivering performance. So the answer to this problem is to balance the system. It's to take a look at your query capability. It's to take a look at your server configuration and your storage needs and your query needs and to avoid the pitfalls of that shared storage and give you dedicated storage to your SQL servers. It's about making sure your company doesn't over-invest in disk drives that are not optimized for the workload that you're trying to do, or overspend on servers thinking that it's server hardware. So fast track fills this gap by taking a look at data warehouses and data warehouses needs. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is for data warehouses only. It's not, fast track is not configured for an OLTP environment. But it does give you a dedicated SAN. It gives you a dedicated server for your data warehouse. It does not give you capabilities of putting integration services on that server or analysis services or web analytics or reporting services or SharePoint on that server. It is a dedicated box. And in being a dedicated box, we are able to give you multiple configurations. Now, this just happens to be an HP configuration of what you can expect to get from the reference architecture. But Dell has configurations as well, as, and so does other uh, server companies out there. So a fast track implementation can go from anywhere between 20 terabytes in size and can range up to 80 terabytes in size. What I'm looking at here is I have a system here, which is 80 terabytes. Now, once I go past that 80 terabyte range, or once I, my workload becomes so extensive, I may need to go up to a parallel data warehouse. And a parallel data warehouse can be up to 500 terabytes. And as I said, we do have customers that are running uh, databases that are 10, 15 terabytes on a parallel data warehouse just because they need the extra capacity for the queries. It has nothing to do with the storage, but it's just they're really, really working those machines really hard. So now, parallel data warehouse architecture. How does it differ than the regular SQL Server architecture? Well, the biggest difference is it's not just one server. And it's not one server to one dedicated uh, disk network. It is basically, if you buy full rack solution, and they sell these in full racks and half racks, then a full rack is 17 servers with 17 or with uh, 11 disk subsystems in the back end. So if you really wanted to break it down into very simplistic measures, this one section here is a single fast track. And each one of these, which is called a compute node, is a fast track. So we have 10 fast tracks linked together, and we have one interface that the clients connect to it with. So we have an active-passive cluster of control nodes that issues the queries back to my 10 fast tracks, and then it generates my queries. It gives me a data center monitoring capabilities. This gives me an ap the ability for where Microsoft comes in. The nice part is TDW means Microsoft is responsible for upgrading your hardware and your software. Or not your hardware. They're responsible for upgrading your software, not you. So when a new version comes out, Microsoft helps you upgrade. It also gives you an ETL interface. 
and it gives you a dedicated backup server that helps backup all these nodes at one time. So now, how does this actually work from an end user query's perspective? All right, query comes in from the end user. That query goes in the control node. The control node passes that query off to those compute nodes, and every one of those compute nodes start working at the same time. They then turn around and pass the query back. Now, I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to show you one last slide here and show you a, uh, two last slides. Big differentiator with Microsoft is that you can have multiple people accessing PDW at the same time. Here I've got eight people querying the control nodes. Those control nodes get the data out there, and they start processing it. Now, a big differentiator for Microsoft is the fact that someone's going to ask me, what happens when I need to back the system up while I have people querying? What happens if I need to load data while people are querying the system? It's not a problem. Okay? There are systems out there that will not let you do two things at one time. PDW is not that way. I can bring in data, start loading my data across all of my compute nodes while the queries are occurring from the end users and you will see only about a 1% degradation in performance. That's incredible. So now, the data and the way it works is that the data is laid out quite differently. It's either replicated or distributed. So I'm going to skip that slide real quick. For fact data, it is spread across every single one of those nodes. But for dimensional data, the dimensional data is actually copied to each one of those nodes so that each node doesn't have to leave its data or doesn't have to leave its system to go get data from another one of those uh, back-end control nodes or compute nodes. Now, what does this mean for you? Really, really fast queries. Now, this one I'm showing you here, and this is my last slide, is the query times of a recent uh, implementation that we did where we took in the blue bar there is their query times based off of their existing data warehouse, their existing SMP data warehouse. That's not one minute and 38 seconds, by the way. That's one hour and 38 seconds. So they had queries that were only one second long that we were testing and ones that were an hour and 38 seconds. We migrated the data to PDW. At this point that I'm showing you this graph, there are zero indexes on the PDW. The green bars is the initial data load performance and our query performance for those queries. PDW was able to take an hour and 38-minute query and turn it into a 32-minute query. Now, where did it end up? We ended up to about 12 minutes when we ended up at the very final solution. And I think we actually got one of the queries down, uh, I think the hour and 31, we got down into about a 12 second query after tuning was done. So if you need really fast results, really fast queries, PDW is a really great solution for that.